Hi, today we're going to be talking about how to use an Instron safely. Material testing systems are inherently hazardous, but with proper training and Instron's built-in safety features, these hazards can be mitigated. Every system comes with an operator's guide that fully details the safety precautions you need to understand to use the system safely. The operator's guide is available on our website if you do not have your own copy. Carefully read all relevant manuals and observe all cautions and warnings on your systems. The machine has no way of knowing what is in the testing space, whether it be your hand or a test specimen. When the cross set is in motion, either during a test or return, you must keep yourself out of the testing area. The safety features and procedures we discussed in this video apply to all Instron Universal testing systems. The cross set is the moving component of the system, which can move up or down depending on the test type. Load cells of various capacities can be attached to the underside of the crosshead. The Blue Hill software controls the motion of the crosshead and is used to develop and run test methods. This is a modular system with hundreds of grips and fixtures that can be attached to the machine with a simple pin and clevis connection. Every system has an emergency stop button, which will stop the crosshead and end the test. Please press the e-stop if you ever feel that an unsafe condition exists. The system has both physical and software limits to prevent crushing hazards, but these need to be manually set by the operator for any change in the test setup. The upper limit is typically only used in non-ambient testing situations with a temperature chamber. Otherwise, it is left at the maximum travel position. The lower limit is the most important and is used to ensure the crosshead never goes lower than where intended. Within Blue Hill, the software limits can be enabled to stop the crosshead based on any load or displacement. Best practice is to use both hardware and software limitations. All our grips and fixtures use the same pin and clevis style connection, which make it easy to quickly change fixtures as needed. Here we have a pneumatic grip that we are attaching to the load cell. Set the grip into the load cell, line up the holes, and secure the grip with the pin. In order to prevent lateral motion of the pin, which could happen during a cyclic test, install the pin clip. Now tighten the check nut to the load cell. While pneumatic grips are very easy to use and make the testing process more efficient, they can introduce the possibility of finger pinches. Instron has several safeguards built into the grip design that will allow you to use these in a safe manner. The first step to grip safety is to understand the correct way to operate the grips. Your pair of grips may have been configured in one of two ways. The first is with a toggle switch mounted to the grips. Toggling the switch side to side opens and closes the grips as shown by the label. Alternatively, a pneumatic foot switch can be used to actuate the grips. We recommend you use a single method to open and close the grips to mitigate risk. Pneumatic grips have a wide opening range to accommodate a variety of specimen thicknesses. It is important to close this gap if it is not needed to eliminate the possibility of a finger pinch. You can do this in one of two ways. Firstly is the utilization of jaw face shields. If you don't have these, you can use the knobs on the side of the grips to manually bring the faces closer together. These grips have an adjustable airflow control allowing you to change the speed at which the jaw faces close on the specimen. You should adjust this screw until you find a closing speed that you are comfortable with. When testing subsize samples, perhaps where the grips are 50 millimeters or less apart, we recommend using a clamping device to place the sample into the grips. Alignment devices are designed to minimize the time and effort required by an operator to properly center a specimen in the grips. The steps outlined here are a good start to improving operator safety. Again, please refer to your operator's guide before using the system. And if you need further training, contact your nearest service representative. Thanks and happy testing.